uh, it provides highly high efficient high level if, uh, data structures and simple but effective approach to object oriented programming so a uh, lot of times those who come from c background if you are asked to create a linked list you have to write 150 lines of code before you use a list here you have to write one line code and you can start using a list or it could be a set or it could be a map what you would like to use so almost every data structure is available on the shelf you just have to pick it from the shelf and start using it it saves your time don't really have to worry about how to get the things done worry about what you want to do so you can focus more on your problem rather than worrying about how to implement a solution for that particular problem so ready made structures data structures are already available for you you just have to select the right data structure of the shelf and once you select the right data structure of the shelf you are ready to go you are ready to go so and it has a very simple approach to object oriented programming those who came from object oriented background there are so many things that you have to take care of correct python is very very flexible very very flexible this topic will be a shocker for those who actually come from object oriented world for freshers this could be fantastic they they, they would enjoy it but those who come from c++ and java background for them it would be are aisa kaise how is it this is allowed this is against the rules are but that language is different and this language is different so you have to respect every language so python provides you something with some very interesting features you may have objects of the same class having different structures you can bind at properties and you can remove properties as and when you on the fly so a lot of interesting stuff can be done in python so it's simple even for those who do not come from programming background you can very well start using this object oriented concept because you are not uh, you are not required to uh, you are not bogged down with the syntax and the rules and so and so it is flexible it gives you an opportunity to do the things your way it will not put down uh, strict rules but you would like to write the code within the framework it's your choice you could do that and you would like to play along with this language you could do that so i uh, will be doing learning python uh, as an object oriented language uh, rather at this course will focus more on uh, after we finish the initial discussion we will turn towards object oriented programming in python that would be one major important topic in our course uh, remember i have shared the syllabus also with you make sure that you go through the syllabus that is minimum what we will be covering our, our discussion will go beyond that but that just a promise because there has to be some contract between you and me you know because uh, if you are enrolling for a course i have to promise you something beforehand ki what is that you can expect out of this particular course so that's minimum and my as my ex students may already knowing we will go much beyond what has been promised in that particular syllabus every stage will go beyond that but that syllabus is given to you as a guideline what can you expect what are the outcomes of this particular course what can you expect out of this particular course so there are some basic things and we will go beyond that python interpreter and extensive standard library are free available in source or binary form for all major platforms from the website python website python interpreter now i i last time talked about interpreter there are there is a compiler there is an interpreter when you write a code using any language it could be c it could be c++ it could be java the instructions that you write are english like language so in c you may say printf in c++ you may say c out in um, java you may say system dot out dot println in python you may say print are but these are words that you and me understands the machine is not going to understand print or accept or display these are not the commands that the machine will understand and will you may accept and display kind of commands are available in cobol as well but these are not the instruction the machine understand so they need to be translated into a format that the machine understand so to translate you have a compiler which will translate the entire source code you have interpreter which can interpret one line translate execute and go to the next line so fetch uh, uh, translate and then execute fetch read the instruction read evaluate execute so it will work on that particular cycle interpreter so rather than translating the entire source code it will translate one line at a time and execute that line if the line is successfully translated into a format which a machine understands now what exactly the term machine means i'll discuss today because today we are going to talk about how python program runs okay because a lot of people have misconception about the language so today it is all about knowing this language better believe me today we will not start with the uh, real stuff of uh, python instructions and anything no it's just to know what we are learning what what is this language all about how in different ways i can use this particular language so if you do not know what you are learning doesn't make sense in learning am i not right so let's go ahead so there is an interpreter that python has and it's not a compulsion but there is an interpreter that python has and this interpreter will interpret one line at a time and then it will execute that line 
say there is an error on line number 10, first nine lines will successfully get executed. When it reaches line number 10, where there's an error, then the program will stop. That could not happen in Java and C++ or any other compiled language. There, all the 10 lines will get compiled. If there is an error, program will not even run. Here will at least run to an extent till that time there is no error that is encountered. And all the resources are freely available for all major platforms. The source code is also available and the binary that means executable is also available. So you'll have this particular thing in two different ways. You'll have the source code. That means you want to change the implementation of something that the library provides some code. You can change and write your own uh, version of the code or second thing. You could just use it as it is the way it has been supplied. So you will have it in binary as well as in source. Both the forms you will have Python being supplied from the website. There are two different versions of Python which are currently put in the market. Python 2 and Python 3. But as I had informed you last time, Python 2 support for Python 2 has been discontinued. And it was just recently six months back, 1st January 2020. Python 2 has reached its end of life cycle. Even then Python 2.7 is one version that was very widely implemented. So there is a lot of chance that you may end up uh, coming across a code even for the next five years, some code that has been included in Python 2.7. That could happen, but we are not going to bother about it because uh, there is a difference in syntax of the Python that we are going to learn. Although cosmetic differences, but there are differences. The way we are going to write instructions in Python 3 and Python 2, there are a lot of, there are small differences here and there. Python 3.0 onwards, they have promised to us the syntax is not going to change. So henceforth, whichever version of Python that you learn in future, the syntax that I'm going to teach you now will hold true even for Python 10. That's the promise that they have now provided. Current, the latest version is Python 3.8.4. So if you look at the TOIB index, which tracks the languages, their popularity for last 20, 30 years. So the highest position Python received was in last year, that is 2019, third position where it displays C++ as the third most popular language. And the lowest position since 2013 has been 13. So it is among the first top 10 languages all these years, last 20 years. And it was been cited as the language of the year in 2007, 2010 and 2018. Between 2010 to 2018, we have seen the biggest surge in the usage of Python with the advent of data science, machine learning, AI, these are the areas where Python has seen, uh, Python has become the de facto standard. If anybody wants to do something over there, you need to know Python. That's how the scene is right now, since 2010 onwards. So when we talk about features of Python, okay, it's an interpreted language, we talked about it, which can save considerable amount of time during program development because no compilation or linking is necessary. So Python allows you, uh, you to split a program into modules. Now, those who come from programming background, you have been using various libraries, you have been using various packages in Java here in Python. It's uh, smooth. You create a file and that becomes a module. Although I'll teach you how to exactly create a module in a particular way, but this particular uh, Python language provides a very convenient way for you to create a creation of modules, which can be reused. Something that you have done today, you need not write that thing all over again. We can actually use it whenever you want to. We, we are going to see how to create reusable components. So these components can be reused wherever you would like to and whenever you want to. And very simple. It's not as scary as creating a header file. It's not as create, difficult as creating a, a dynamic link library and then linking it, all those things. It's smooth. Even a kid with two days experience in Python can create a module. And I'll teach you the perfect way to create modules as we go ahead. And it supports dynamic typing. Vivek, I was talking about the question that you had asked was related to dynamic typing. Dynamic typing, I told you last time, those who all remember, four types of languages, statically typed, okay, or strongly typed languages, we can say, like Java, where if you create a variable of to hold some type of data, it can hold only that type of data. It cannot hold any other kind of data. If you try and assign one type of value to another type of variable, it would generate an error. Then we had language like typeless, like BCPL. You could store anything. You can dump anything into that particular variable. You had a language like C, which was not a strongly typed language. You could take one type of data and store into another kind of variable container, but that data will get converted to the type of the container in which you're trying to store the data, not a strongly typed. Python is dynamically typed. That means just to put in simple words before I demonstrate what exactly dynamic typing is, your variable will automatically, the nature of the variable automatically change depending on what type of value you're trying to assign. On line number one, you assign integer to it. Line number seven, you assign a float value to it, real number to it. Line number 20, you assign a string to it. And line number 15, you assign an object to it. 
oh, it has no problem. And why is it that made possible? We need to understand dynamic typing concept with a demonstration. I'll demonstrate to you exactly and show you how flexible this language is. So you're not bogged down with the type of the variable. Are hey, what kind of variable have I defined? How I'm going to use that particular variable in the program? You're not really supposed to required to bother about it. A lot of people come down for this course because they hear about Python is easy. Are easy means it will allow you to do more with less number of lines. That means you can, it is, you can do more with less code. Okay. So you can write your code very, very compactly when it comes to Python, but do not say that's the reason it's easy. Huh? The less the number of lines of code that you write, less there are chances of errors, less of testing you need to do because there is less number of lines of code that you have written. So these codes are maintainable at times. It may not give you always the performance that other language may give, but nowadays the machines are so very good. The, they work very fine. Not always the time is critical. And if time is critical, Python has a solution for that as well. I'll talk about it, how that solution can be utilized. So if you compare Python code with C, C++ or Java, or if I take it with C, your Python code will be several lines less. Suppose 100 lines of C code, I could get the same work done in 20, 25 lines in Python. That's the kind of difference you can see when it comes to Python. So quite a less number of lines of code. So you can deliver the product quickly. You can finish completing the application quickly. You don't require more time to test because number of lines are less. So it's in a way it's good, but then has it replaced all languages? No, because it has its own problems as well. So high level data types allows you to express complex, complex operation, single statement. As I talked about list or a set or a map for which you may go ahead writing a code in C here in one line, everything is available. And then multiple statements block. If I want to create, we have to keep in mind, put a curly brace, ending curly brace, and then arrange those blocks. It was a nightmare. In Python, it is visual representation. You indent the code and the way you do the indentation that will create the block structure for you. So it becomes quite easy. And then you do not have to create variables. You can use it on the fly. You, you, want, to, you want to have a variable, use it and proceed further. In C, C++, you have to define a variable first and then keep in mind that that variable has been defined earlier. Now I'm going to use it later. Nothing of that sort. You want somewhere, a container to store some data, use it and start working on it. You do not have to predefine the variables. Neither you have to specify the type of the arguments. But with all these advantages come disadvantage as well. You cannot use Python normally at places where speed is critical, time is critical. The completely compiled language like C, C++, they can map to the underlying hardware. Now, if it maps to the underlying hardware, that means for that particular hardware, it will give a very good performance. But then it at times becomes platform dependent because you have one kind of machine and I have another kind of machine on both the machines. When that code is compiled, say you have a Linux machine, I have a Windows machine, Linux working on some hardware and Windows working on some kind of hardware. So I have a Linux compiler for C and I have a Windows compiler for C. You have a Linux compiler, I have a Windows compiler for C. So the code will get translated into format that the Linux machine will understand on your machine. And on my machine, the same C code will get translated into format that Windows machine will understand. So it's going to map to the underlying hardware as well. So it will work best the way the hardware uh, is available. It will get the most out of that particular hardware. Python doesn't do that way. You write a Python code on my machine and you run it on any machine across the globe. It's still going to run. It is providing you flexibility. It has not been mapped to the underlying hardware. It has nothing to do with what the underlying hardware is. The reason for that is it is not running on the underlying hardware. Now you may say, sir, how is it possible? I have a machine and the program is not running on the machine. What are you, are you you're fooling us? We learn today how Python program actually runs, but then that comes at a cost. Cost is speed. So Python program may not always run as fast as C, C++. Okay. C, C++ program are, but you can compromise some features of Python and then make it run as fast as C, C++. How to do that, that I'll tell you, but the traditional Python that we are going to learn, you cannot compare that with uh, C and C++. It will run several times slower than C, C++. Now, when I say several times slower, it could be like 50 times slower. It could be hundred times slower. That kind of difference in speed you may have. So some code that will take one minute on C, uh, in C language to execute that could take hundred minutes in Python, but don't have to worry about it. It's not in terms of uh, the minutes here. The difference is in terms of nanoseconds and milliseconds. 
So in commercial application, not every time that difference in millisecond and nanosecond doesn't really matter much. So we can not worry too much about it. So there are some downsides of going for Python. We had reached, I'm doing a revision. Huh? So you, some, many of you who are there for the last session, you have to, uh, I'm sorry, it will be quite a repetition for you. But there was a request from a number of students that they had missed a lot of things last time. So I'm repeating it. And then I'll take up something new after this. This was the last point that we had discussed last time. Uh, how do you run a Python program? So if you want to execute a Python program, okay, we need to install that particular Python. And once you're installed, we have an interactive shell. Now, when I say interactive, you give a command, you'll immediately get an answer. You give a command, you'll immediately get an answer. That's an interactive shell that we have in Python. And you can write an expression, you can write a statement, you can write do a lot of things. And when you run that, the result will be immediately seen on the shell. We also have an IDE that's integrated development environment called as IDLE, which comes bundled along with Python. So if you take a Python installable, download from python.org, I shared with you on the Google uh, Drive. You can download that or you can go to python.org and download. Read the mail carefully. I have given you all the links from where you can do what. So either you can download on your own or you can take it from the Google Drive that I have shared with you. I have also added a lot of additional tools in that drive. So make sure that you keep on visiting that drive to check what additional tools I'm supplying. Today I have added three more tools to it and because I'm going to discuss them. So as and when I discuss any tool, I'll be keeping that tool in that uh, drive. So we are talking about static type checking. When I teach that, I'll keep a tool in that particular drive. So you do not have to hunt here and there. You can go to the drive and download. Although I'll also share you where to find that particular tool. Because not always my drive is available. So this ideally is an integrated programming program development environment that comes along with Python installation. So once you install Python, that's there. And installation Python is simple. You just have to say next, 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 next. You must have installed so many games. Python installation will happen. We are not going to work on Python 2. 2x no we are going to work with python 3x it's 3.1 3.2 3.6 i don't remember it doesn't mind we will try and use 3.8 because there are a lot of new features which are added to python 3.6 in terms of language features so i'm going to use many of those language features to 3.6 so minimum 3.6 is something that you should have but even if you have 3.0 that will not matter much because some features here and there may not work but otherwise everything is available 3.8 it's available free hai. download karo, install karo. now when you open up the shell, you get this symbol, uh, either three uh, greater than sign, okay, or you can get some dot signs as well. So the cursor, that's the place, it's a shell prompt, three angular brackets, you get to see that's a shell prompt. And at that shell prompt, you're going to type your instructions. And once you type that instruction, you will immediately get the result over there in the itself. And sometimes if you forget something, you can just say type help and you can uh, ask for what help you'd like to have and you can get the help of uh, that feature as well. Okay, so let me give a small demonstration and you want to come out of it, depending on which OS you're working, control D, control Z, or you can just type exit and come out of that particular Python prompt. So Python input and output are distinguished by presence and absence of these symbols. So either you may have these three symbols where you start writing your code or three dots where the continuation of that command happens. And otherwise there is nothing where output comes in. I'll just show you a difference as to how it appears. And let's uh, see that before we understand how actually the Python program runs. So if I want to run Python, I go into command prompt. I have installed Python. I have downloaded it from python.org and I already installed Python. So I go to D drive. I prefer working over here. And I say P-Y-T-H-O-N. So once I start typing Python, my Python will start. I have Python 3.8.3, 3 8.4 is the latest one. I shared with you Python 3.8.4 uh, as well. Doesn't matter much. Here I go. Now I want to type some command. I told you to work with this simple calculator. It's a shell. Look at this. This is the Python prompt where I'm issuing a command and we get the result. Then next time I say 10 into four, I get answer as 40, but I could have been writing some complex command. So I could have said printf, Welcome. I got answer as welcome. At times it could be more than one lines command. Okay. I could just say, say, hello, name. Can you see the triple dot? Don't worry about what it is, but can you see the triple dot? That means my previous line is continuing is what I'm trying to say. Okay. And I say print. Hello. Name. Okay. So it's saying indentation. So in Python, 
everything is based on the indentation. That means I'm creating a code block. I'll have to indent that particular statement. So now I say print hello comma name look at it, it has generated an error and we are trying to take care of an error error has been taken care of now what i want you to focus is my this is my python prompt my input has been done over here uh, triple dot is the continuation of the last statement so that my last statement python statement was of more than one lines so that's a continuation and when i run this particular code suppose now if i say say hello and i pass somebody's name Say, I say, say hello, and I pass a string, Vinay. It says, hello, Vinay. Okay. So we have so many participants today. Okay. We have Anant also who's attending. So if I say, say hello, and if I say Anant, I could say in double quotes. And this time I plan to say in single quotes. I say, say hello. Anand, it has given the answer. Can you see? Uh, this is the Python prompt where I am starting uh, issuing my command. Then there is triple dot where you see this triple dot. There the same previous command has been continued. And when there is no dot or no angular bracket, that's my output. So that's how simple this particular Python prompt is. Ah, you forgot some things. You don't remember that command called as uh, print, or there is a command called as type, and you just forgot how to use that type. So if you forget something. There is somebody to help you. I could just say help type. This help is something which will help us most. So if I type help, what has happened? It has generated some error for me. Okay. Okay. It has given us some uh, something, some problem. I may just check it out later. So, uh, and you could also start with ideally. I want to finish. I say come out and I want to start with ideally. So I say ideally. And if I say ideally, my integrated development environment should start. Or I'll start from here if it doesn't start. I D L E and I open up the IDLE. Here you go. And you have help over here as well. Okay. And you could type the commands here as well. 5 plus 4, 9, and here it's colorful. So you understand what's input and what's an output. And the same command if I wanted to uh, execute, uh, say, say, Hello, Raj. So he says, I do not know what is say hello. So let's define say hello. I say def. Again, I am doing the same thing. Say hello, name. So don't worry about the syntax. And anyway, I'm going to teach you that. I'm just showing how simple it is. And you just have to understand where is there uh, input goes in, and where when you get the triple dots. Oh, there in Python prompt you got triple dot. Here we are not getting triple dot. Okay, so that's my program. And now if I say, say, hello, it's on the shell, we are directly writing a code and we executing. No compilation done, nothing. Uh, otherwise you are in the C program, you would have to write a code, save that particular file, compile that particular file, link that file and then execute. Here I'm directly doing it on the shell, on the prompt. I'm writing some scripts. So Python can also be used for scripting. And I say, Vivek, Says hello, Vic. That's how simple it is. So you do not even have to create a separate file, compile, link, and then execute. Nothing on the prompt itself. We can finish with the entire task. So Python is interesting. Okay. So that was about the shell. Now the question is, if I have some script that is there. Okay. Now, say this is a code that you have written, but uh, you did you recollect when I restart my uh, uh, prompt? If I come out of it and if I restart, that say hello is not there now. So if I again start ideally, if I again go with ideally, I, I get the shell. But now if I say again, say hello, uh, I type in my name. It says nothing, the code was not there because that was there in the memory. That program was there in the memory. It's not saved, but I want to run this code every day. Every day when the lecture starts, I want to say hello to you and then I would like to continue. So I'll have to save this particular script. So in that case, you can create a script and that is what I'm going to tell you today. How does it actually run? So here I start decide to define a code. So I say def say hello and I sure you'll memorize this code by now 
and I'm going to use the same thing again and again till the time I don't explain you what exactly it means. I'm going to say hello, good evening, and the name. And I'm going to save this file. Look at this. I'm saving this file. I'm saving this file by the name say suppose. I'm going to save this file with the name as greet suppose. I say G R E E T. So I'm going to save this file by the name greet. Oh, it has been saved. I want to run it so I can say run run module. So when I run this file, okay, nothing has happened because I did not pass anything. Okay, so there was no name that has passed. So I want to run this particular code. So how do I run this particular code that has been actually saved over here? So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to over here. I'm going to start my Python, Python, and we had a file over here. File name was greet. So I say, or even if I'm not over here. Let me. I am on the command prompt only. Watch it. Exit. Here I am on the command prompt. Like always, you are there. And if I say dir g star dot star, you have a file called as greet. Can you see that greet dot py file that has just now been created? Eighteen twenty three. Just now the file has got created. Greet dot py. And you want to run this file? Let's try. So I say Python. And this is our today's discussion. Greet dot py. I said greet dot py. The program has got executed. Are but I should have given a call to something. Something should have been done in that particular code. So let me make a small change to that particular code. Uh, okay. Let me make a change to that code. So what I'm going to make a small change is I'm going to ask you to enter the name also possibly. So I'm going to ask you to enter the name. Say uh, I'm going to say name is equal to. Don't worry about what I'm writing. Huh? So you should not be bothered about what I'm writing. Just see what is happening. Okay, just see what is happening. So I say this, and then I say, say hello, say hello, and this is may not be the best way to write it. Eh? So don't judge based on what we are writing today over here right now. And then I plan to run this particular code. Okay, I could run it from here, a run module. So I'm running. It's asking me what's your name. I say my name is Anant. Okay, it says hello, good evening, Anant. Okay, I run that code once again. I run that code once again. I say run run module, and I have been asked what's your name. I say my name is actually what it is. So that name a program has got executed. Okay, I am on the command prompt now. Here I am. I am on Windows. I am on the Windows shell, and I want to run that program. So I could just say Python. Python. I am going to work with different operating systems as well. Eh? So I am saying Python, and the program name is greet dot py. So when I run it, saying what's your name? Correct. I say my name is Prithvi. So it says hello, good evening, Prithvi. Correct. This was when I was working on Windows. Suppose if I'm working on Linux, and with Windows 10, one very good thing we have Windows uh, subsystem for Linux. So you do not have to bother about having uh, dual boot machine. You can have Linux inside your Windows now. So this is my Linux inside my Windows. So I go to D drive. Uh, Don't worry. Those who are from Linux, they'll understand what I'm trying to do. Anyway, uh, here we go. And now I'm at the place where I have this program called as Greet. Eh? So somewhere over here, I'll have this program called as Greet. What is it? Greet, 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 Greet. Can you see that? Greet dot py. So I want to run this program. So if I'm Linux, I'll now say Python. Same thing almost, but I want to use a new version of Python. So I may say Python three. On Linux, by default, we have Python 2 as well, 2.7 as well. So I'm saying Python 3, and my program is greet.py. So it's again asking me, okay, I am Linux, I say. So I say hello, good evening, Linux. So we could run that program. Now the big question is, how did this program get executed? How did this program get executed? How was this program? I wrote a program on Windows, and now I'm running the program on the Linux without a slightest of a change. The program has got executed over here. So the same program, same script, same code that we have written. So I'll just open up the code and show it to you. So what we have written is a small piece of code is what we have written, and we are running this particular code on different operating systems, and it's successfully running. Had I got one more operating system over here, which I don't unfortunately, but if I had one more operating system, we could have run that program. This was a small program that we have written. Okay, simplest of the program that we can have. Don't worry about the instructions that are there. Right? That's irrelevant for us. What instructions have been written? Point is, these are some Python instructions, and I'm running that program on Linux. It's working. I'm running that program on Windows. That's running. I could run it in ten different operating systems. It will run without a slightest of a change. 
So the discussion or the important top points concept that you have to learn is, or somebody can make a guess, how is this program running on different machine without a slightest of the change? I neither compile the code, recompile the code, nothing of that sort I'm doing for different OS. Uh, Linux, I have to compile using Linux compiler, Windows, I have to compile using Windows compiler, nothing of that sort. It's just like you don't even know what compiler means and everything. You're just writing a script and you're running that program. So let me tell you about the basic idea first, and then we'll go ahead with the solution where we do not want our client to even know anything about programming and he should be in a position to run the code because he's more interested in running the program. When I distribute an application, the client should have, it's so easy, double click and start running, finished. Yeah, type the name of the program and should start running. So I want to create distributed in that fashion. It should run smoothly on any platform. So let's understand how it normally happens and what you can do, tweak it to fulfill the requirements. So our topic for discussion right now is something which is very important to understand how do Python work or how does Python program run? So that's a very important discussion that we're going to have right now. So how do Python run? So you could write a Python script, the small code that I've written right now, I will call it a script. We'll not call it henceforth as a Python program. We'll call it a script. The reason for it, we'll come to it later. So I have written a small script or in, uh, or interactively in a shell. So remember I typed inside a shell, say hello three times and I ran it. That is also possible. The Python interpreter does a great deal of work to carry out the instructions in the program. That means these instructions are executed by something called as Python interpreter. But let's understand what exactly this Python interpreter is all about. Okay. How does it run this particular program? So you are writing this code, which is an English like language. Everybody amongst you could read this particular code. So what code we have written, everybody could read this. Say hello, print, good evening, name, input something, say hello, something. Everybody could read it. It's English like. And believe me, English is not a language that machine can understand. So we have written a source code. That's my Python script. Note the words. Huh? I have I have mailed you today asking you to have a notebook. Everybody should carry a notebook. Whatever new things that you learn, you need to note it down. If you believe that, or if you are under making an assumption that you'll huh, I have understood and I'll it will, I can recollect it later, that's not gonna happen. Scribble down, write down something that you're understanding new. Unless you don't jot down the things in your notebook. There is no way that thing will sink into you. Make sure that take the notes as we discuss. So there is something called as Python interpreter. And we talked about interpreter and compilers. Compiler translate the entire code. In Python, we have this script that we have written. It will translate one line at a time. Okay, understood. There may be some expressions, some statements, some group of statements. It checks whether the syntax is correct or not, whether it is well formed. Have you uh, taken into consideration all the rules that one has to take, keep in mind while you express your uh, uh, idea using Python. If everything is okay, then it has to execute it. But if something is wrong, it will generate an error. Now that's very simple to understand how Python program is running. Execute it and okay, it has to execute. But what is this interpreter generating? So your program, I said, if you're working with C and C++, the program is translated into a format that the host machine will understand. Here, the Python code is not translated into a format the host machine will understand. Those who come from Java background, it is something like a virtual machine that the Python has. So while you're trying to run a Python program, the interpreter does not translate the code into a format which is mapped to the underlying hardware. It has nothing to do with the underlying hardware. Whether you have a desktop or you have a laptop or you have a supercomputer, Python has nothing to do with that. So the Python interpreter, just for the sake of comparison, if I have a C compiler, it will translate the code into a format that the host machine will understand. If it's a Python code, the Python interpreter is not going to translate the code into the format that your Windows or Linux machine will understand. It has nothing to do with that. It's going to translate this code into a intermediate code language called as bytecode. It's a low level language. Possibly you and me may not understand it immediately. It could be difficult to for us to read. But it is a bytecode. Bytecode is a special format of instruction that some other machine is going to understand, not your machine or my machine. Because in Python, between your machine and my machine, that between the program and the machine, there is some additional machine that is installed and that is nothing but a virtual machine. So Python programs are not running on your host machine directly. Host machine is your operating system, Windows, Linux. They are not running on the host machine directly. They are running on something called as a virtual machine. So on top of your machine, there is another additional machine that will get installed. Very lightweight. I'm going to talk in terms of the size also about it. It's a very lightweight kind of machine that will get installed. So the Python interpreter 
will translate the code not into the format that your windows or linux or mac machine understand it will translate the code into a format that the virtual machine understand so there is one more layer in between so if you want to think about it pictorially it could be something like this okay i'm not very good at drawing but then bear with me here you go if this is your host machine that is hardware if this is your hardware and this could be like uh, whatever hardware you have you have i5 you have whatever it is okay this is a hardware to manage this hardware we have another layer that's your os so it's the os which is managing the hardware so we never interact with the hardware directly it is the os which will be managing your hardware so your this is the os which has been installed on top of your hardware so this is my operating system got it it could be linux it could be windows it could be whatever it is this could be your operating system windows ho uh, or it could be uh, mac whatever it is which your operating system it is so there is an os so on top of your hardware there is an os which is managing the hardware so any time even if you play the music we actually start with winamp application that talks to os and os talks to hardware and then you can hear that music so is there a hardware that is there but in case of linux if it was a c program that would run directly on the windows operating system so if it was a c code suppose this was a c program that could possibly be running over here oh let me take some other color here i go suppose if it was a c program that could have been running on top of your os over here directly so i could say this was my c program that is running directly on top of my os it's interacting directly or it could be like c or c++ application that's running over here on top of my os and then it's interacting with the hardware but then if it's a python program that's not how the story is when it comes to python i'll have one more layer over here there is another machine and we'll call this machine as a pvm python virtual machine i will call it as pvm or python virtual machine so that's something that will be installed over here so i'll say there is a pvm pvm this pvm is a machine like your hardware can understand only zeros and ones maybe your operating system calls will interact with the hardware to get the work done but here we have pvm and i'm going to talk about this pvm implementation today in what different ways and your python program will run on top of this pvm okay your python program is going to run on top of this pvm so when you write a python code when you write a python code this is my python code dot py file a script whatever script i write so this was suppose our g r e e t dot py so when we write this grid dot py instructions over here it was in the format that you and me can read now this instructions will be translated by the interpreter into a format which neither your os will understand which your pvm will understand pvm is a something like a emulator it will emulate your actual machine it will behave as if i am the actual machine so the code needs to be translated into format that the pvm will understand like your hardware your actual machine electro mechanical machine understands only zeros and one so likewise this particular machine pvm understands a special instruction set kind of code and that is nothing but a byte code so when you write this python code this python code will be translated into byte code and those byte codes will run on this python virtual machine so you and me will write this py.py script i'll create that will be translated into a format that the pvm will understand and the pvm will execute that particular code wherever required it will interact with the os wherever required it will interact with the os and os wherever it requires it will interact with the hardware but you and me do not have to worry about what os it is what hardware it is we are just going to write the code which is understood by this pvm but then the question comes like then this is just like uh, other virtual machine based languages yes it is like other virtual machine languages like java you have do not have to worry about what underlying hardware you are working on but do i need to install this pvm every time in our case initially yes and i am going to show you technique where we can not worry about installing this pvm as well so these are solutions which python provides other languages may not provide you such kind of solutions so this is how it actually runs so let's take a small uh, a bit more discussion so when the interpreter runs a script it completely translates that particular script in what format into byte codes so when you are writing a code that say hello whatever we have written that is translated by this interpreter not in a format that the windows understands or linux understands into a format that our pvm understands so the instructions that pvm will understand the language that the pvm will understand is called as byte code many of you have must have heard about binary code 
So it's a binary code for PVM. So it's a format of instruction that the Python virtual machine can understand. So if you look at this, bytecode is a uh, is sent to another software component called as Python virtual machine, that is PVM. Okay. So when you write a code, watch it very carefully. You are writing a code here. You are writing a script. That script is sent to the interpreter. Interpreter is doing all the syntax checking and everything. If there is an error, it will generate an error. If everything is okay, it will translate that particular one line into a bytecode. Bytecode is not sent to the operating system or the hardware to execute. It is sent to this Python virtual machine. Correct. And when I run that particular code saying Python, what did I say? Grid.py. So the interpreter starts reading that line. So it read the line, first line. If it is correct, it is sent to the PVM. Correct. If the PVM reads that particular code, it will accept the data from the user. So I enter my name. What's your name? I say Prithvi. I enter the name. Once I enter that particular name, if everything was okay, output was generated. So the instructions that we have written, we had written, were actually translated into format that the PVM can understand, not the underlying hardware can understand. So this PVM is one layer, additional layer, which is on top of your OS, which provides its platform independence. So while you write a code, your code at the most has to be translated into this byte code. Do not have to worry about translating it into a format that your hardware or your OS can understand. It's always translated into this byte code. So byte code is a format of instruction. It's a language. It's instruction set understood by this PVM. So what is the interpreter supposed to do? You write a Python script in English like sentences that English has to be converted into format that the machine understands. But Python code is not running on your Windows or Linux machine. Although you may have a feeling as it is running on Windows and Linux machine, it's running on another machine which sits on top of Linux and Windows machine. And that is virtual machine, Python virtual machine. Okay. This Python virtual machine takes the responsibility of interacting with the hardware. So Vivek had asked the question, that means I'll have to have different Python virtual machines for different OS. Yes, to begin with. That's the reason on python.org, you have Python for Linux, Python for Mac and Python for so-and-so. I, I have sent you a mail where I asked you install the Python and keep it ready. So when you're going to install the Python, what you're going to install, you're going to install this Python virtual machine and keep it ready. So when you run the script, the, the interpreter is there to understand. It will translate it into a format that the PVM can understand. But then that's not always good because some installation has to be done beforehand. If I have to run the program, Python is flexible. It's different than your Java, where you will say you need to install JDK and only then the Java program will run. Hey, forget. Python is special. And how is it special? We'll understand as we go ahead how Python program runs. But for that, we need to understand concept of modules and everything. So that would be the right time because what you like for the client, you do not want to waste your time translating this particular code and I think you should get it run directly. So for client, just to tell you, I'm not going to give this .py files to the client. Because if I give this .py files to the client, I'm exposing my business logic. He may open up the code, see the code, everything. And for a developer, the wealth is the source code. We do not want to share the .py files with the client. Not always. The client will not come back to you for any changes tomorrow. He may make changes in the same code and continue using it. So I do not want to give the .py files to the client. I want to give the bytecodes to the client. That means I can generate these bytecodes, keep it ready. And next time I ship the bytecodes directly to the client. And I'm going to teach you how to do that. How we're going to bundle that bytecodes, wrap into such a format that the best of the client will also not be in a position to open up and see. We'll learn that. But this is just a bigger picture. I'm not going into details as to how it is happening inside. Those topics will come later when you discuss in detail how Python program runs or how to run a Python program. This is just a bigger picture. I hope you understood this, what we have just now seen. Yeah.